Well, in our Frontline Diary segment today, we connect with Dr. Chris Bredesen, head of malignant hematology and stem cell transplantation at the Ottawa Hospital. Uh, Dr. Bredesen, thank you for being here. How much were your patients impacted at the height of COVID-19? Oh, well, we had uh, an exciting time at the start of COVID-19. As you know, the leukemia and transplant patients are probably the most uh, immune suppressed patients in the, <clears throat> the hospital. And right at the start, we had a small outbreak uh, of COVID right when we were starting to close the ward to visitors and to cancel our outpatient uh, transplant program and leukemia program. Uh, we had a little cluster that uh, was pretty stressful for everybody, but we worked our way through that and uh, it's been pretty smooth sailing ever since. It had to be an incredibly difficult time for patients going through one of the toughest things they'll ever go through, awaiting a transplant and then going it alone without family right there by their side. Yeah, it's so again, as, as we close the ward down, I think we forget how hard it is for patients, uh, even, even though we have iPads or, you know, telephones that smartphones, we can communicate with the family members uh, on rounds as, as needed. Uh, to not have your loved one or a caregiver there with you is, is very hard. Plus, we were keeping the patients in their rooms, uh, mostly with the doors closed, which is a very, very long time. You know, patients be in the hospital for five or six weeks under these circumstances. And uh, we can see it was a, it was a very uh, difficult for them. For sure. And, and how have you yourself found the work during the pandemic? Some that I've talked to say it's invigorating. Others say it's incredibly draining. Uh, what have you yeah. found? So they're right. It's both. So my my wife would say that uh, it, it invigorated me. I was sort of, I don't know, stuck in the tail end of the winter doldrums or something, and um, all of the work that we had to do for, you know, worst case scenario planning, etc. As it goes on, and it gone into April and May and June, uh, it's tiring. And it's tiring, and it's not just patients who are cut off from a lot of family during that time. Uh, workers yeah. as well and then when the bubble uh, expanded to 10 you were pretty excited that you got to see more of your family but it didn't work out exactly the way no. you anticipated right no that's that's true I, so yes i'm very fortunate that my uh young adult children you know live in town nearby and and we're pretty close so we would be seeing each other usually at least a couple times a week for meals or drop-ins and things but when the pandemic started you know the Kids had to stay away because both my wife and I work in the hospital. So I was very excited when the bubbles expanded. And I, you know, called my son to say, come on over Saturday, bring your, you know, fiance and uh, we'll have a barbecue and everyone's in the same bubble now. And he's like, yeah, dad, I'm not sure I want to be in your bubble. So he didn't like the idea that both mom and I were in the hospital all day. So he postponed it. Hey. Uh, and uh, now we're, now we're all back together. And, uh, at least the parents are happier. Now it's all good. The rewards of raising a responsible child, I guess, right? Who's making the yeah, wise decisions. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, they're, right. good. they're good kids. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate this and uh, all the best going forward, both in your work life and uh, with your family at home. Thank you very much. Have a great day.